السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموالاه. Well, dear viewers, welcome from Darussalam al Taifia, New York. Once again, today we're going to be going over the book The Rights uh, from the students of Darussalam al Taifia, New York. Inshallah, we're going to start off with the rights of Muslims as we see here. It is on page 29. Today we have Brother Hafiz Tasneem Jaki Rahman. He will assist us in the discussion of the rights of Muslims, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, as Brother Hassan has mentioned, I will be discussing the rights of Muslims. So first off, I would like to start with a hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, hadith number 10. Uh, it says, An Abdullah ibn Amr, radiyallahu anhuma, an in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده والمهاجر من هجر ما نهى الله عنه. Narrated by Abdullah bin Amr, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A Muslim is the one who avoids harming Muslims with his tongue and hands, and a muhajir is the one who gives up all what Allah has forbidden. So I believe this hadith is very straightforward. A Muslim is someone who does not wrong another Muslim whether it's uh, physically or verbally and a muhajir is one who um, does not care about what Allah has forbidden um, next I would like to go to a hadith from Sahih al-Bukhari uh, this would be hadith number 13 it reads An Anas radiallahu anhu anil nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba liakhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi Narrated by Anas uh, The Prophet وسلم, said None of you will have faith till he wishes for his Muslim brother what he likes for himself So they're basically a saying treat others the way you want to be treated um, uh, This hadith is proof that you should follow it Brother Hassan if you put that in him No this hadith was fairly straightforward um, You wish for your brother what you wish for yourself if you like something for yourself, if you're going to do something for yourself, and you have a Muslim brother, try to wish that upon him as well. Try to uh, open an opportunity for him to be able to acquire the same thing you have, at least. Um, the next hadith is from, I believe, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 16. Uh, it says, An Anas, An al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, ثلاث من كن فيه وجد حلاوة الإيمان أن يكون الله ورسوله أحب إليه مما سواهما وأن يحب المرأة لا يحبه إلا لله وأن يكره أن يعود في الكفر كما يكره أن يقذف أن يقذف في النار. Narrated by Anas, the Prophet وسلم, said, Whoever possesses the following three qualities will have the sweetness, delight of faith. Uh, one, the one who, the one to whom Allah and His Apostle becomes dearer than anything else. Uh, number two, who loves a person and he loves him only for Allah's sake. And number three, who hates to revert to atheism, this belief as he hates to be thrown into the fire. Uh, once again, this can be found in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 16. Um, basically, this hadith is saying that uh, to get the to get the best out of your faith, you have to follow the following three things: um, uh, love the love Allah and uh, His beloved Prophet uh, more than anything else. Uh, number two, um, love a person for the sake of Allah. I believe this was very uh, straightforward. And number three, uh, uh, to not like to revert to atheism, disbelief. Uh, yeah, I believe this was very straightforward as well. Um, next hadith is from Sahih al Bukhari, uh, hadith number 1240. It reads, Muslim 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 Narrated by Abu Hurairah, uh, I heard Allah's Messenger saying, the rights of a Muslim on the Muslims are five, to respond to the salam, visiting the sick, to follow the funeral processions, to accept invitation, and to reply to those who sneeze. Um, 
So basically, this hadith is saying that as a Muslim, we have five rights over our uh, brothers and sisters uh, to respond to the salat. So if someone says salam alaikum, we reply with wa alaikum salam. Uh, visiting the sick. So if your uh, fellow Muslim brother or sister is sick, just visit. Very straightforward. Uh, to follow the funeral processions, uh, uh, attend uh, uh, janaza, um, the funeral prayer. Uh, to accept an invitation, so somebody invites you to their house, uh, accept it, go to their house, very straightforward. And to reply to those who sneeze, uh, somebody sneezes, sneezes uh, say alhamdulillah, they say alhamdulillah, you reply with alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, depending. Very straightforward. Um, uh, next uh, hadith is from Sahih al Bukhari, um, hadith number 1239. Read Anil Bara, Ali Allah Anhu, Ala Amaran and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sabrain, when a Haan Sabrain Amaranabi Tibari Janais, where I added in Malib, where Ijabat is Dari, when Asrim Mazlum, where Ibrahim Asam, where this Salam, where Tashmi Til Artis, when a ha. ونهانا عن آنية الفضة وخاتم وخاتم الذهب والحرير والديباج والقصي والاستبراق. Uh, narrated by um, Al Bara bin Azb Azb I believe. Uh, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered us to do seven things and forbade us to do other seven. He ordered us to follow the funeral procession, to visit the sick to accept invitations, to help the oppressed, to fulfill the oaths, to return the greeting, and to reply to the sneezer, saying, May Allah be merciful on you, provide the sneezer says, all the praises are for Allah. He forbade us to use silver utensils and dishes, and to wear golden rings, uh, silk, clothes, uh, divaj, uh, pure silk cloth, they see, and uh, istabarak, two kinds of silk cloths. Um, so basically, this hadith relates to the previous hadith that I mentioned, uh, except this time it adds uh, things that we should not do. For example, using silver utensils, uh, wearing silk clothing, and uh, wearing golden rings. Uh, I believe this hadith was also very straightforward. Um, next hadith we'll be uh, presenting is from uh, Sahih al Bukhari, hadith number 2442. Muslim, Muslim, Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, A Muslim is the brother of another Muslim, so he should not oppress him, nor should he hand him over to an oppressor. Whoever fulfilled the needs of his brother, Allah will fulfill his needs. Whoever brought his Muslim brother out of discomfort, Allah, bring, Allah will bring him out of discomfort of the day of resurrection. Allah will screen him on the day of resurrection. Uh, so basically, um, to summarize this hadith, it is saying that if you commit an act towards a um, uh, fellow Muslim brother, uh, Allah will commit the same act towards you. So if you help a Muslim brother, Allah will help you. If you harm a Muslim brother, uh, Allah will harm you. Uh, next hadith is from Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 2444. Uh, it's an Anas, radiallahu anhu, qala qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, help your brother, whether he is an oppressed or he is an oppressed one. People, people asked, O oh Allah's Messenger, it is all right to help, to help him if he is oppressed, but how should we help him if he is an oppressor? The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, by preventing him from oppressing others. So basically, this hadith is saying that you should help uh, the oppressed, those who are um, being wronged, 
uh, and you should also uh, help the oppressor by preventing him from oppressing uh, people. The next hadith is from Sahih Muslim, hadith number 2564. It reads, I'm Abi Hurairah, the Rabbi Allah, لا تحاسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا ولا بيع ولا يبيع لا يبيع بعضكم على بيع بعض وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا المسلم أخو المسلم لا يظلمه ولا يخذله ولا يحرقه ولا يحرقه التقوى ها هنا ويشير إلى صدره ثلاث مرات بحسب بحسب امرئ من الشد أن يحقر أخاه المسلم كل المسلم على المسلم حرام وماله وعرضه أبو هوي رضي الله عنه ذكرت الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الله عليه وسلم الساين Don't nurse a grudge and don't bid him out for raising the price and don't nurse aversion or enmity and don't enter into a transaction when the others have entered into that transaction and be as fellow brothers and servants of Allah. A Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. He neither oppresses him, nor humiliates him, nor looks down upon him. The piety is here, and while saying so, he pointed towards his chest thrice. It is a serious evil for a Muslim that he should look down upon, for, upon his brother Muslim. All things of a Muslim are inviolable for his, Muslim brother, for his brother in faith, his blood, his wealth, and his honor. Um, brother Hassan, if you'd like to interpret this. Um, yes, I believe we've also seen this hadith earlier in the rights of uh, brothers, rights of siblings, sorry. <coughs> but, so the idea here is that you shouldn't, um, you should hold anything against your Muslim brother, even if he has wronged you. In this case, it says, bid him out for raising the price. Even if he's wronged you, you know, don't try to hold anything against him. Try to, you know, relax, let it calm down. Um... Also, it says, "Don't uh, over here. Don't enter into a transaction. Others have entered that into that transaction." Speaking of, um, someone's trying to buy something, and something also you want. So what you do is you make things harder for them. You get into the transaction and you try to get it. You know, you kind of raise the price, and now they have to pay more to get what they want to do. So that's uh, trying to that's entering the transaction. So just in general, don't try to inconvenience the, inconvenience your Muslim brother in any way, even if he has inconvenienced you. You know, try to help him out. Uh, this is in the previous hadith. Um, help the oppressor, and you know it would be helping them. You know, first it's like why would you? How would stopping? him from oppressing others actually help him it's something he wants to do you know he's not going to like you for doing that but you're helping him in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're making him a better person and that's good for it's going to work for you inshallah it'll work for him that way as well and uh, also mentions how it's a serious evil for a Muslim that he should look down upon uh, uh, his Muslim brother his brother Muslim um, we shouldn't be condescending to another Muslim brother uh, and the rest are pretty, yeah, self-explanatory, I believe. And that's from Muslim 2,564. Okay, the next hadith um, is from Muslim, hadith number 1218. It reads, <laughs> Verily, your blood, your property are as sacred and inviolable as the sacredness of this day of yours, in this month of yours, in this town of yours. So Brother Hassan, if you'd like to interpret this too. So this hadith saying, of verily your blood, your property are sacred and inviolable as the sacredness this town of yours. Uh, it's talking about how your property are sacred and inviolable as the sacredness of this day of yours, in this month of yours. This is uh, comparing the comparing the similarity between uh, your own blood, what you own, your property, as sacred to um, the month of Hajj in this scenario, because this was in the time of Hajj, and it's saying it's almost as, it's as sacred as um, the Hajj time. Uh, 
uh, it reads, Qaya Sa'idha Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al min bawa fanada bi sautin wa fi'in faqal Ya ma'ashara man qada aslama bi lisanihi wa lam yuftin imanu ila qalbihi la tu'dhu لا تؤذوا المسلمين ولا تعيروهم ولا تتبعوا عوراتهم فإنه من تتبع عورة أخيه المسلم تتبع الله عورته عورته ومن تتبع الله عورته يفطح يفطح ولو في جوف رحله نفي so this uh, Nafi uh, narrated that Ibn Umar so, uh, anhu, said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ascended the minbar and called out with a raised voice, O you who accepted Islam with his tongue while faith has not reached his heart, do not harm the Muslims nor revile them nor spy on them to expose their secrets. For indeed whoever tries to expose his Muslim brother's secrets, Allah exposes his secrets wide open even if he were in the depth of his house. So basically what this hadith is saying that um, as a Muslim brother you should not expose your fellow Muslim brothers for Allah will expose you for your faults uh, no matter uh, where you are. I believe this was uh, straightforward. Um, the next hadith is from Sahih Muslim, hadith number 2581. It reads, An Abi Hurat radiallahu an, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, أتدرون ما المفلس قال المفلس فينا من لا درهم له ولا متاع فقال إن المفلس من أمتي يأتي يوم القيامة بصلاة وصيام وسكاة ويأتي قد شتم هذا وقذف هذا وأكلها وأكل هذا وسكف وسفك دم هذا وضرب هذا فيعطى هذا من حسناته وهذا من حسناته فإن فن فإن فنيت حسناته قبل أن يقضى ما عليه أخذ أخذ من خطاياهم فطرحت عليه ثم طرح في النار. أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه قال that uh, Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying, Do you know who is poor? They, the companions of the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, A poor man amongst us is one who has neither dirham with him nor wealth. Uh, he, the Holy Prophet وسلم, said, the poor of my ummah would be the one who would come on the day of resurrection with prayers and fasts and zakat, but he would find himself bankrupt on that day as he would have exhausted his funds of virtues. Since he hurled abuses upon others, brought calumny against others, and unlawfully consumed the wealth of others, and shed the blood of others, and beat others, and his uh, virtues would be credited to the account of one who suffered at his hand. And if his good deeds fall short to clear the account, then his sins would be entered in his account, and he would be thrown in hellfire. Um, so this hadith is saying that um, uh, it doesn't matter how many uh, good deeds that you have, if you uh, do harm, do harm towards a Muslim brother, uh, if you oppress them, uh, uh, you will be thrown into hellfire. Um, uh, uh, Brother Hassan, if you'd like to add anything. So this hadith, uh, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells his Sahaba that you're not poor if you don't have money. The real uh, poverty is when there's someone who enters the Day of Judgment. You know, he did all this zakah, he prayed, he fasted, but then he finds himself uh, with no virtues, no blessings, no good deeds. And it's because when he would hurl his, he would, you know, he would, uh, talk badly about another you know he would hurl his abuses on another Muslim brother then that Muslim brother um, would receive not only the abuse but he would also receive uh, that man's uh, good deeds as it says um, let's hear the, uh, and his virtues would be credited to the one who suffered at his hands so if someone's hurling abuses to you you know it's good for you but you should also you know teach them before they end up losing more good deeds than they have bad deeds and in the end, if that's the case, then they might end up in the fire. Okay. Uh, this last hadith regarding this topic from Sahih Muslim, uh, hadith number four, uh, 1412. It reads, Ani ibn Umar, radiallahu an, Ani nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqal, la yabi'ir rajulu, 
يقتل على بيع أخيه ولا يخطب ولا يخطب على خطبة أخيه إلا أن يأذن له. Ibn Umar رضي الله عنه reported Allah to Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم as saying, a person should not enter into a transaction when his brother is already making a transaction, and he should not make a proposal of marriage when his brother has already made a proposal except when he gives permission. Uh, so basically, I'd like to focus on that last part. Um, uh, when a when a brother makes a proposal to, uh, for marriage, and you wanted to propose to the same uh, uh, woman, uh, this hadith is saying that you should not, unless um, uh, there's like a divorce between the two. If your if the other brother he allowed you, he gave you his permission then you're allowed to go out. And we've already spoke about, you know, coming in the transaction when your brother's already making a transaction. Um, that's what this hadith is saying. And that's the rights of Mus the, the rights of Muslims. Well, we talked about the rights, in the beginning we talked about the rights that Muslim brother has. We talked about how, uh, what a Muslim shouldn't do, you know, he shouldn't harm anyone. Uh, even if it's you should harm them verbally or physically we talked about what rights they actually have the five six or seven that they have and the five six or seven things we shouldn't do to another muslim we also talked about what we actually get from this uh these um following these rights these rights are obligated upon us because they are the rights of another muslim but even when we do these we are we do receive good deeds as in uh, and Bukhari 2442 we learned that you know we're going to be brought out of discomfort if we follow these in the day of judgment whatever we do if we treat them nicely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will treat us nicely in the uh, day of judgment inshallah and we also talked we also went over a couple more things we shouldn't do and that's all about uh, the rights of the Muslims maybe there's more that we have missed but these are the bulk these are very important ones we went over today inshallah